Last week, the Boyd County Public School System released new data on student suspensions in 2016-2017. This came after a request from the Wake County Board of Education for more information on the high number of elementary school suspensions, and we're actually joined by one of those Wake County Board of Education members today. Keith Sutton, Wake County Board of Education, been on the board for nine years. Um, uh, before that, Keith had uh, held leadership positions with the North Carolina NAACP and the uh, Triangle Urban League. So, known you for a few years. Good to have you here. Thank you. Glad to be here. And Dr. Keisha Bentley Edwards. We just met uh, just a couple weeks ago. Uh, Dr. Bentley Edwards is at Duke University, um, a, a team that is actually still playing um, in, yes. in, in, in March of <laughs> Um She is with the Samuel D. Cook Center on so Social Equity. So, she's a professor and a researcher um, and has some experience and expertise in this issue of um, disparities and racial equity. So I want to start with the data. I'm going to pull up a couple of screens. I want to start with you, Keith, as we as we talk about it. The um, the numbers were pretty, um, um, pretty stark. I mean, we're looking at there were 12,000 suspensions in Wake County public schools in 2016, 2017. Twenty percent of them were in elementary schools. African Americans um, are, are about a quarter of the student population, but are two thirds of suspensions I mentioned. And this was uh, for the elementary school. Sixty-one percent of elementary school students suspended were black children in the fourth and fifth grade. Now we've also got a, uh, another chart uh, that sort of breaks it down and shows you the you know the actual disparity as you see the dark blue uh, pie chart um, again showing you know this is just elementary school suspensions in Wake County. Um, this is pretty indisputable evidence that there are um, pretty significant disparities in Wake County in terms of how students are suspended and treated in the discipline. Is that right? Yeah, I mean, it, it is. Um, we, we have known for some time that there is a, a disproportionate number of African American students are being suspended. While it represents a very small number of elementary students, uh, uh, roughly 2% of the students in elementary school, uh, the, 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 just again, the difference in the rate of black students versus white and other races is uh, extremely high, and we feel like it's at a crisis point uh, right. in the district, and we need to respond to it, figure out why that is, and then how we respond to it. And I mean, and, and we're, we're focusing on elementary school, but I mean, we, the, the research we, we've done, the public school forum, and we're going to show some other data in a minute from some other districts. Obviously, this, this is something, as a school board member now for nine years, and you served as chair, um, this obviously flows across all the uh, middle school, high school too, right? And this is not unique to elementary levels. This is not unique to Wake County. This is not unique to North Carolina. Uh, right. We see the same or similar uh, uh, disproportionality uh, in terms of suspensions across the board. Yeah, one thing I do about uh, uh, Dr. Bentley Edwards, um, I read, read an article you wrote recently, um, and then actually you highlight the fact that you start seeing this show up in preschool. Absolutely, on a national level, the pre, it, and this is looking specifically at pre-K programs that are part of a state system or a county system because the private preschools, you can't, we don't have those numbers. But the disparities are similar to what you see here, and you have to wonder, what does a toddler have to do to get suspended or expelled? Right. And that's the way you have to look at it from a developmental perspective. And that's why when you have school psychologists, you often see a lower number, uh, an active, mm. regularly placed school psychologist or behavioral specialist, because they're able to make the distinctions between what's normal behavior that can be modified um, or with teacher with, where you can change the teacher approach right. compared to what needs more in-depth study and, and care as far as that child. And that's why you have less suspensions and expulsions when you have specialists that are there to help make proper interventions. Right. Let me show up just so we can, well, because I want to continue the conversation into so what do we do? I mean, what are some solutions? But let's look at Guilford County and Mecklenburg County. Uh, we've got some charts here, just as you, to your point out, Wake County is just the most recent, and, and frankly, I give a lot of credit to Guilford and Charlotte Mecklenburg for putting this data out. They actually released some pretty extensive equity reports. Guilford, um, you had the uh, much higher number of instructional days lost, which, you know, when we get right down to it, that's part of the problem here is just mm -hmm. losing. The, and then there you can see the, the, the bar charts in the middle, and we'll have these on our website too, just showing you the significant uh, disproportion between um, black, white students and Hispanic. I mean, it's, it's, it's striking. Charlotte Mecklenburg schools, um, we've got the data for them too. You know, in all grade spans, the percentage of black students uh, with one or more suspensions is substantially higher than every other race. And the one thing that I thought was interesting, because um, we often hear, 
um, about achievement gaps and things like this, that it's poverty. But if mm -hmm. we can show up the next slide, Charlotte Mecklenburg put it out and showed, all right, well, here's, you know, here are students from high poverty, moderate poverty, and low poverty, and we still have the same gaps. You have the same gaps. In fact, you can even see that like sort of a, sort of a low poverty African-American students, you're still going to be suspended even uh, disproportionately to uh, sort of a, a low wealth white student. So mm -hmm. we got the data. So what do we, what do we do? I mean, it's, it's, I guess recognizing the problem is the first step, but now sort of what are the things that we should be thinking about and why is it happening? Well, I think recognizing the problem certainly is the, the first step. Uh, that's why we you know, have this data. We're analyzing this data and seeing what others are doing. Uh, and then understanding why this problem uh, uh, exists. And as you talked about, race, poverty obviously have some, some impact on that. Uh, uh, but what happens in the classroom, as Dr. Bingley Edwards just uh, spoke about in terms of how teachers and staff uh, respond uh, uh, to that, so having uh, the proper number of uh, counselors and social workers uh, in our schools, having, having teachers understand uh, about childhood trauma, adverse childhood experiences, and being uh, well positioned and trained to deal with that as they see that happening in children, particularly as we're seeing it happen in children at younger and younger a much younger ages, uh, and so again, how to respond uh, to that. And obviously, there's always uh, a funding challenges that then as we get to how we uh, provide that training for teachers uh, and staff, how we provide for more counselors and uh, uh, social workers uh, in, our, in our schools. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's, it's a complex problem uh, that uh, I think is a, has a multifaceted approach in terms of how we solve it. Let me ask you this, uh, uh, Dr. Bentley Edwards. The, um, one of the ch when we talk about this issue, sometimes it's, it's a little difficult because folks can get defensive because it sounds like we're saying, so are you saying that these, the, the, the teachers, administrators are racist, that they're, they're picking on the students because they're black? Um, how do we confront that? I think first we have to look at structural racism. And where it comes into structural racism is when you see these disparities so that if your practices have a disparate impact and you do nothing about it, then that's where you're supporting some institutional racism and structural racism because the system is having these, you can see in the system that there are differences in how the disciplinary practices are engaged upon depending on the children. Right. If you just decide that it is the way it's supposed to be, that is a support of institutional racism. I don't believe all teachers are racist. Right. I don't, you don't go into this for the money. You right. go in because you really want to help children. Right. And, but sometimes it's scary to think, well, do I have implicit biases that are contributing to these disparities? And the conversations are hard to have. They're absolutely right? difficult I mean, to have. Sure. But you know, what's more difficult for these children is to be impacted by the lack of adult conversation around race. And so we need to have allow teachers to talk about their concerns, their fears, or even where they just feel helpless right. in working with children that are very different from their own children, as well as the communities in which they're, they live and play and everything else. So I think that that needs to be looked at. And also, in part of the cultural competency training that we look at, we have to say, how do you see children as children, mm -hmm. right? Do you see them as adults that you're engaging with? Or do you see them as children that are responding in developmentally appropriate ways when they challenge right. authorities at, in the ninth grade? We're gonna take a, <laughs> we're gonna take a commercial break and we're gonna, then we're gonna come back. I do wanna talk about another uh, mm -hmm. uh, cultural training. I wanna talk about teacher diversity, sort of solution things or uh, other discipline practices that I know that, that Wake County, for example, has been looking at. Mm -hmm. So we are gonna continue this great conversation, but before we go to break, see if you can answer this question. In Wake County, public schools, 20% of all suspensions involve elementary school students. What is the top reason for their suspension? 